Deepak, for materialists to have a consistent worldview, they have to believe that consciousness can be entirely simulated in non-biological systems, on silicon and computers in the future, so that it, the same experience that we have as consciousness can be put into non-biological material. You think that's impossible? I think uh, consciousness can be simulated in a non-biological system. I think intelligence can be simulated in a non-biological system. Uh, we call it artificial intelligence. But I don't think you can have actual consciousness, the subjectivity of consciousness, the creativity of context, uh, consciousness uh, in a biological system. I'll tell you why. Um, first of all, on a very foundational principle, that uh, you might say is even mathematical. You know, the foundational principle as in Gödel's theorem. Uh, Gödel's theorem says that uh, if you have a sufficiently elaborate uh, system of mathematical theorems, which are basically algorithms, one's derived from the other, you'll always find a theorem somewhere there that you can't prove. And uh, it has nothing to do with the previous theorem. If you don't accept it, you're stymied. Your mathematical framework falls apart. If you accept it, you can continue with um, the progression of mathematical axioms. Now, of course, there are many ways to interpret this, but I have my own <laughs> interpretation. And that is Gödel's theorem is an example of fundamental creativity. Here you have a theorem that crops up in your consciousness, in this case, the consciousness of a mathematician. and you can't prove it, but it's true. Okay, it has nothing to do with a mathematical algorithm. Now, artificial intelligence systems are based on algorithms. They're based on feedback loops. They're not based on fundamental truth, which is consciousness, which is true creativity. True creativity is literally, in my opinion, a quantum leap in context, meaning, relationship, the coming together of very improbable, almost incongruent realities to produce something totally new. So in my view, when Einstein comes up with a theory of relativity, that's fundamental creativity. He taps into the discontinuity, the gap between this and this. There's a discontinuity. That discontinuity is, in fact, consciousness. It's a possibility field. It's an unpredictable field. You cannot predict it. It's non-algorithmic. It, uh, it is creative. It's imbued with intentionality. And you have to embrace uncertainty for that. Well, you cannot simulate The it. question is, if you build enough complexity into the system, can you generate that? Certainly, the argument is that the computers can be creative in some sense, oh, yeah. because you, if you have enough complexity, and, and you have to imagine a billion times more complexity than current computers, where the complexity of the computer will be more than the operations per second in the human will brain. Will they feel anguish? They'll, will they feel existential conundrums? Will they wonder about how they came to be created? Will they worry about that's, the afterlife? That's the big question. And I don't believe they can. Okay, just based on what I just told you, they, I don't think. And then also ask yourself, who creates the computers? Well, uh, but we have our own children who we sort of create, but they, they have an, we know that just they are like conscious. Just like life cannot come from anything other than life. I mean, there are people who talk about abiogenesis that chemicals created life, but then you say how, and then they're stuck, right? It's the usual hard problem. <laughs> so just like life, so far as we know, comes out of life, so too intelligence comes out of intelligence, and the universe is an offspring of that intelligence too. Here's the way I would put it. I would say that if you are a materialist, and you believe that only the physical is real, you have to, by force, believe that you can create human-level consciousness at some point in non-biological systems. It's inconsistent to be a materialist and say that you could never do that. But first you must 
ask yourself, what is matter? No, sure, sure. If, you, if, you, if you're outside the material system, then you're free to do what but you want. Prove but prove to me the existence of matter. No, no, I, I'm, I'm not saying I agree with that. I'm saying I, I want internal consistency. And internal consistency demands that if you're a physicalist, you have to say consciousness can be created such that if consciousness, true consciousness, cannot be created in, a, in an ultimate computer, then that causes one to question the whole program of materialism in the first place. I agree, but you know, do realize con that computers are the creations of consciousness. You can't get away from that. That's true. You know, you cannot, consciousness happens to be the white elephant in the room, okay? <laughs> We're doing everything because it exists yes. in this room, right. but we don't look at it because it cannot be seen. <laughs> so, you know, that's the basic conundrum. And life cannot come out of, you and I are the continuity of life since life as we know it in biological systems came about on this earth. We are the unbroken continuity of that. Yeah. Okay, and everything that comes out of us is also the unbroken continuity of yeah. that. Yeah. You can come up with theories of abiogenesis, evolution. Evolution has nothing to do whether God exists or not. Okay, because evolution is just how one species evolved to the next species. It has nothing to do with how life generated. So, yeah, we had random mutations. What is random? It's random to you and me because we can't figure out what's actually mm -hmm. happening. I go to the New York subway station. I see, you know, all these people randomly going hither mm -hmm. and thither. Yeah. And I know that each one of the, mm -hmm. them has a destination. So you can, you can see randomness as creativity, actually. Mm -hmm. Randomness is a form of creativity. A completely predictable system can never be creative. 